Gizzard shad have played a role in fisheries development on the Missouri River for the past 20 years, providing a much needed alternative forage source. Unfortunately, the weather is just too extreme in North Dakota to sustain large populations. Above Lake Oahe, the winters were simply too severe and those shad quickly disappeared uh, in Lake Oahe and anywhere further north. When the flood of 2011 washed most of the rainbow smelt, the river's main forage, through the turbines at Oahe Dam, it was time to again look for an alternative food source for the walleye and northern and other predatory fish on the Missouri. And again, the gizzard shad filled the bill. We brought some of those adult fish uh, into several different locations uh, in both the North Dakota and South Dakota portions of Lake Oahe, hoping that they'd naturally reproduce um, and uh, provide some forage for our predatory fish. And reproduce they did in very large numbers. We're currently seeing the best uh, young of the year shad numbers we've seen since 2008. Another downside to the gizzard shad, besides their susceptibility to harsh winters, is that they actually grow too fast. We've got a lot of these shad out there now they're in that five, six inch range, which is great if you're a, you know, 18, 20 inch walleye, which a lot of those very abundant walleye from the, the 2009 year class are. The 2014 and 2015 year classes of walleye were pretty phenomenal as well, as anyone who's fished the river recently will tell you. And unfortunately, those larger gizzard shad are just too big for those eight or nine inch walleyes. But Bailey says large hatches of freshwater drum, white bass, and even emerald shiners are helping fill the bill, along with an old standby. And then in the, the lower reaches of Lake Oahe, where we have the cold water habitat that can support rainbow smelt, smelt numbers are also fairly respectable down there, too. This Tom Jensen, Outdoors.